I didn't see any questions in the Q&A, but if you do have questions, I think there's a mic right here if you want to stand up or yell it out if you want. The, the it's an interactive workshop. It's not, not just a Q and A. So yeah, yeah so we'll have a workshop. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. The mic. Can you can you say it in the mic so everyone can hear you, please? So yeah, I think you know the pattern here is that companies generally, it's uh, the society here, is more of a secular format, right? Um, have there been parallels with like uh, Christian affinity groups or Jewish affinity groups and companies, and how uh, have those uh, you know? What kind of results have they achieved? Uh, have they been helpful? Uh, on the other hand, have there been any examples possibly of uh, um, Muslim associations where it kind of backfired and led to uh, maybe uh, um, uh, repercussions towards those who lost it? I'll touch on the first point. I'm not aware of any negative backfiring uh, uh, examples, but. Um, the company that I work with, we have actually employee resource groups, ERGs, for faith groups and non-faith groups. So we have a we have a Jewish uh, ERG that we that, that are allies, and we actually partner together on on some events. So the relationship is uh, is is super uh, positive and, and, and productive. Um, it, you you use it as you, you actually. It's a relationship, just like interfaith groups. When you have an interfaith between a, a, a Muslim, a masjid, and and a church and a synagogue, you're going to find groups that will share a lot with you. There's definitely going to be some differences, but you focus on the things that you actually uh, share and and uh, and the things that you share uh, together, rather than the, the differences that you have. Wallahualam. I don't know if you want to comment on that. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, for the second question, I'm not aware of any negative uh, implications of joining an affinity group. But let me touch upon the first question in, in another way. So um, for us in the Silicon Valley, in the Bay Area, for example, it's very normal that you find people praying Juma at the company. So um, like people at Google pray Juma at Google. People at Oracle for years we have been going to give them khutbas at Oracle or like just off the campus. So um, let alone the, the daily prayers, right? Um, people at Google, for example, were able to um, make some of um, the restaurants, and you know food at Google is complimentary, uh, so you don't pay for it, um, halal, right? So th th that's a big, big thing, right? Um, in some cases, um, I'm, I'm aware of individual managers and so on who are able to allow you to take Eid off or so, naturally. So uh, I would say uh, it's all about the potential uh, that we can reach. And the other thing that the group would be trying to do here is, regardless of whether it's a faith-based or non-faith-based, there are some standards right now. And guess what? The diversity, like the whole call for diversity, is making companies seek to actually establish these groups, right? And like, we shouldn't be shy to say that the LGBT community, for example, is like doing very good job in tapping into this, right? So it doesn't matter whether like it's, an, it's a faith group or non-faith group. At the end of the day, the whole concept of an affinity group is that there are people at the workplace that are sharing something in common, and this something is making them some sort of a minority within the company, and the company would like to accommodate for them becoming more comfortable at their workplace, right? So because we do share a lot in common as Muslims, naturally, right? We should be able to tap into these um, uh, perks that are granted to these affinity groups. That's why hopefully based on um, like what, what Basil was mentioning, what like the, the, our aim here in 2022 would be to reach out to affinity groups, existing affinity groups across the more established companies, and then reach out to uh, brothers who are more aware of these perks, standard perks that are given to any affinity groups, and then combine the two in formulating, putting together this playbook, uh, and then starting to share it with the community members. So that the goal here would be to rally at least 10 new affinity groups, and then putting together the alliance of existing affinity groups. The other example that I would like to give is Facebook. So when, when Facebook, they were taking this 
stand, which is against Muslims for a couple of causes. And the Muslims in the Bay Area were protesting at the, like in front of the Facebook headquarters. People within, like employees, Muslim employees within Facebook, they had something to say, right? So think of being able to, like there are many causes that we shouldn't be, or like your company may be taking a position that you are not comfortable with. So think of not just having your affinity group try to voice their opinion. However, having like affinity groups at other companies as well, Muslim affinity groups at other companies, or maybe ally affinity groups, non-Muslim ally affinity groups that are like sharing the same position against this cause or like towards this cause with us, trying to um, do the same, make the same effort in their respective companies. So you end up five or six Fortune 100 companies rather than only Facebook sharing these thoughts and then the employee resource groups at each of these are rallying the different employee bodies at these companies to exercise some pressure on, on this company that is taking a position that we are not accepting. And so, so many of opportunities here and I think like the, the opportunity is clear for us to uh, like uh, capitalize on it, inshallah. Yeah, I like it, so can I go ahead? I like it, Do you want to, to come talk here? No, no, I mean like because th this one is re like, okay, because this one is recorded, but anyway, anyway, so you can, you can come here. And Thank you, appreciate that. Sure. So my, my little comment is just about um, a situation that can arise in corporate America. So uh, for example, um, uh, an easy um, accommodation is a, a prayer room, a conference room for prayer. And so normally in a normal day, um, you've got a couple of people going into a prayer room praying uh, go, and then going by their business. Comes Ramadan, then you have dozens of people going into the same conference room. Issue be it becomes an issue for people that um, work around the area. It also becomes an issue when you have a dozen or a couple dozen people going into uh, the, uh, the restroom and making wudu and washing their feet in the sink. So a few of these things can uh, backfire, absolutely, but uh, it's just better to get ahead of it. Uh, maybe talk to your HR partners and take it from there. That's why, that, that's why we are not say, we are saying like don't hide in a corner and try to do it. Like whatever effort that we are talking about here will be in full coordination with the, the, the chief diversity officer or the, the HR officer at your company so that it would be structured. Inshallah. If that's the worst fire, yeah. Fire, yeah. You have like the uh, box on Okay, so the question here is, what would be the minimum number of Muslims that, that would be there in a like, workplace in order for them to start, um, start actually asking for these? Uh, one. one. I think, like, I think it's, it, like, it's one. This is a, this is a right. This is a diversity right. So.